On this week's edition of Vacation Tuesday, we're headed down to the Caribbean to take a guided tour of some amazing caves. I'll show you how to zip line in North Carolina, and we'll top it off with a cheesesteak from a very famous American city. Buckle your seatbelts because this is Vacation Tuesday. Hi, America the Travel Guy. Welcome back to Vacation Tuesday. Here is a quick pop quiz. How many continents are on the planet? How many times have people walked on the moon? And what is the largest species still roaming planet Earth? It's all travel, my friends. I'll give you the answers in just a few minutes. But first, when it comes to vacation, oftentimes we think of the beach. You know, the U.S. has amazing ocean beaches in Hawaii, on the Pacific coast, the Atlantic coast, the Gulf of Mexico, and others. In addition to those, when I think of the beach, one of the geographic regions that comes to mind is the Caribbean. Now let's take a look at our trusty map here. Here is the area defined as the Caribbean, because these islands, or nations, are located in the Caribbean Sea. The region is made up of 12 countries and 17 dependencies, and I have stepped foot on 15 of them over the years. Here's the southern tip of Florida, and Mexico is right over here. You know, one of the most visited countries by Americans and Canadians is the island nation of Jamaica. Have you been? Oh, well, then you know what I'm talking about. Can you think of any cities that are in Jamaica other than the capital of Kingston, of course? I can. Uh, Montego Bay, Negril, Ocho Rios, just to name a few. Now, I have been recently on a trip there, and in addition to horseback riding, beach lounging, pool lounging, and an ATV adventure, I explored the Green Grotto Caves. Take a look. Why do people come here? They want to know about the Jamaican history, the heritage, and they want to know about the geological features of Jamaica. Not to mention how they survived the cave yep. and the habitats that live within that are important to our ecosystem and the environment. In the Caribbean, there's lots of places to go, but there's something unique about Jamaica that I can't quite put my finger on, and you guys talk a lot about it. What is it? It has a lot to do with the people. It's all about the people, the culture, the music, the lifestyles. We have a mixture of various uh, races, like from Africa, North, South America, and Asia, cultural background, cultural mix. And all cultures bring their parts of their world to Jamaica, making a blending pot. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we are like a laid back group of people that enjoys life to the fullest. Why did these caves exist? It was created beneath the sea roughly by a combination of dead aquatic life. Mm -hmm. And then what is believed is that a volcano beneath Jamaica is what shifted the tectonic plates and forcing the massive cave from under the sea. Mm -hmm. And it became a hideout for many generations of people. Mm -hmm. And now an attraction today. Well, let's go take a look. Man. Why not? Jamaican history has a, has a unique story to it, doesn't it? That is true. Columbus was told by Cubans they were the land of gold. So his arrival in Jamaica was actually for riches. This is 1494? 1494. But eventually, the Tainos, they taught the Spaniards were gods, offered hospitality, but then they became slaves. So that led to the Spanish taking over in 1509, so we became Santiago. Right. And what the, the Spaniards did in Jamaica, it was a storage facility at first. But they realized the agricultural background, it's good, the, the soil is good, it's fertile. So they started to do banana in 1510, didn't do well. So they brought the West Africans in, in 1517, and do sugar plantation business. Why didn't the bananas do well? Because you find banana takes a long time to produce. Got it. Sugarcane is more quicker, and you can do a lot more sugarcane yeah. than banana. And plus, it makes rum. Right. Rum Hello. is like a big deal, right. you know? Do people get, do they get a little claustrophobic? There are areas where the space is a little narrow, but it's not really a claustrophobic feeling because there's a lot of ventilation, natural ventilation within the cave. When they come in for the first time, what do, you, what do you see? What do they say? Many people as they enter the cave, they're in awe. Yeah. They're like, entering this light into a world of its own. It is amazing, it is spacious, and they're like, they're seeing the habitat movements of the bats. But there's some parts of the cave you can just be extremely quiet. So we clean the caves of any garbage. Mm -hmm. We don't kill trees, don't burn bushes, mm -hmm. sensor lights. They only come on when there's a tour. Mm -hmm. How many people go through here a day? It can be up to maybe a thousand people or maybe 500 on a cruise day. On an average day, maybe like 200 people. Got it. People hid inside the cave, African ancestors, Taino Indians of South America, Spaniards, even pirates. 
once used as a safe haven. You see, the English, they came in 1655, May 10th. Mm -hmm. General Robert Van Nebel's Admiral William Penn's army. But one particular man was here, Cristobal Arnalbo Assassi. Please watch your head. He was the last Spanish governor of the island of Jamaica. His idea was to do this, hide out in this cave until he gets an opportunity to escape. And surprisingly, there's a passage he used to go three miles out to an exit on the beach, located a boat, and use it to go 90 miles to our neighbor Cuba. And that passage is on your right. Oh, wow. That's what we call today the escape route. The system of the cave is actually two caves. There is the current one you're in by the name of Runaway Caves. Mm -hmm. It was named after the African ancestors, primarily used by them as a secret hideout until they had the opportunity to flee to the hills. They were known as people of the hills, so they tried to go to the hills, create their villages, mm -hmm. create their armies to rebel against the English. However, the cave after this is the popular known Green Grotto. Watch your head. Which greenery has to do with a color on the rocks, two types of things on the rocks, oxidized copper and the water plant algae. Grotto is Latin meaning cave with underground water. And in fact, if both caves are joined together, it goes 10 miles in length, 28 square miles in width. It's like a, a hidden secret revealed. When they come for the first time, what do people, they get inside these caves, what do they say to you? They are amazed, they're in awe, they, 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 they fall in love. Coming here gives you an experience of the past that you realize that ancestors have been through, where they used to hide, what they used to do, and, and how useful the cave was for them. Green Grotto Cave is a 40 feet depth. Cave, 40 feet. 40 feet. And they go as far as creating some steps to help you to access this cave. For the ancestors, they use roots. We are now in the Green Grotto Cave. You're in that cave where the lake system, combination of salt and fresh, 19 feet, six meters depth, 15 degrees Celsius, 60 Fahrenheit. Now, people can't get in this water, though, when they come to visit, right? Well, they used to, but what you're looking into now is that um, there's a lot of bats living above the lake, so it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be safe for people to jump in. So you know? there are bats above us right now? Yes, there are bats where? above us right well, now. Let's see them. Now, if I can look carefully, I might be able to find something. Ah, right there. Look at those guys. Right there. Oh, they don't like the light. No, they are nocturnal, like the Batman himself, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Chad, good Anytime. to meet you, man. Pretty cool, huh? That was my sixth visit to Jamaica, but my first time visiting those caves, and I loved it. Now, getting to Jamaica via a commercial flight is pretty short. Uh, from the Northeast cities, a uh, nonstop flight from New York to Montego Bay, about three and a half hours. Jamaica is also a very popular cruise destination as well. On a related note, next time you're in the grocery store in the ketchup aisle, check for pick a pepper sauce. It's just one of the many Jamaican-style sauces you can buy in your local grocery store. Now, perhaps you and your family can have an authentic Jamaican dinner with peas and rice, oxtail, goat, or jerk chicken, man. Or you may want to plan a sandwich night. Now, frankly, I cannot think of a more American sandwich, aside from maybe the cheeseburger, than the cheesesteak from Philadelphia. So, the first cheesesteak served in Philadelphia wasn't served with cheese, but today, the cheese debate rages on based on personal taste. The cheesesteak, or steak and cheese, was invented and served in 1930, according to the Philadelphia Historical Society. The world-famous sandwich is sliced steak, ribeye being the cut of choice or prime for most, cooked over medium heat, with or without other ingredients such as onions, peppers, or mushrooms, and is served hot on a soft hoagie or submarine roll. The essential cheese choice is either American, provolone, or cheese whiz. Making this fast food sandwich at home is easy, provided you use quality ingredients and a locally baked soft torpedo or hoagie roll. And while you can find a good cheesesteak just about anywhere in the United States, in Philadelphia, check out Tony Luke's, Gino's, and others, or the home of the original creation at Pat's King of Steaks.
Hey guys, don't forget to join us every Tuesday right after the program or again at 1.30 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday for a little live Q&A about this week's show. I will be there to answer your questions about the program or any other travel questions you may have right here on the homepage of VacationTuesday.com. Thanks for watching Vacation Tuesday, your round trip ticket to a virtual field trip around the world. I asked earlier how many continents are on the planet. The answer is seven. They are Africa, Antarctica, which is hard for me to say, Asia, Australia, Europe, North America, and South America. How many times have people walked on the moon? The answer is 12 as of September 2020. And what? is the largest species still roaming planet Earth. Well, according to OneKindPlanet.com, the blue whale. Yes, my friends, the blue whale is the largest animal of all time, reaching a weight of about 198 U.S. tons and a length of about 100 feet. And here is a whale of a transition. From the ocean to the sky, I recently traveled to Boone, North Carolina to learn more about this part of Appalachia. One of the activities I did, and so can you, was zip lining. Yet another reason to wear a different safety helmet. What are we going to do today? Well, today we're gonna to take you on our canopy tour. They call them zip lines. And so we have a tour that is basically 10 lines. We have a cliff jump, which is a vertical descent off a 45 foot rock cliff. Oh and a 120-foot swinging bridge over this uh, river that you hear behind us in the background um, with a 35-foot cascade underneath it. Now, to me, that sounds like a daredevil thing. Like, but, but the reality of it is you have first-timers out here every day. Absolutely. Probably uh, the majority of the people that come out are first-timers. Yeah. When somebody's out, maybe they're on a cruise, maybe they're down in the Caribbean, they see zip lining tours or other canopy tours. Can you help us out a little bit about what to look for? I would imagine safety is right off the top, right? You know, look for a company that is uh, certified by the ACCT, mm -hmm. which is the Association of Challenge Course Technology. Okay. Uh, that's a national standard. Um, insurance, of course. Yep. Um, and uh, online reputation, I think, goes a long way. Absolutely. And is zip lining sort of a, a relatively new thing or no? Probably the 70s, people started seeing different park services and different um, tourism de destinations trying some things out, which has developed into this um, aerial adventures that you see uh, a lot of places you go now. And what do people say when they come down for the first time? Wow, I want to do that again. <laughs> I had one of my, uh, my friends say that you call on the name of the Lord when you go across the valley. <laughs> Uh, you, we get a lot of different uh, reactions, yeah. you know, from people that are excited that they have overcome a fear to um, the adrenaline junkies that said that did it for me. Got you it. know, everybody gets uh, something different out of it, which is something special to me. But again, somebody watching this even right now going, oh my gosh, I'm terrified of heights. Is this something they should do, or are they never, they're never gonna make it off the launch pad? I, I think it would be natural for everybody to be a little scared of heights. Yeah. This is for everybody, you know, and we give people the opportunity to test their fears in, a, in an environment where it's very well taken care of as far as your safety, your harnesses, and all the checklists that we go through. Thanks, Jack, appreciate this. Once again, our journey was diverse, but our time, my friends, is short. I hope you will take the pop quiz we whipped up based on this episode, and please consider this a personal invitation to join us for a little live Q&A right after the program. We do that on Tuesdays right after the show and again at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. And we've got another virtual field trip around the world coming soon. I'm Eric the Travel Guy. Thank you for watching Vacation Tuesday.